it wasn't any normal moral debate they had to go through. This wasn't about returning a lost bike or giving back someone's wallet. This could literally change their lives. It could make some wonderful dreams come true or it could bring the cops to their doorstep. It was insane that all of this started over a stupid sofa. For Reese Wor Cohen, Kelly Guaste, and Lara Russo, life was now all about moving on from graduation and heading towards life as full-fledged adults. It might have been a simple plan, but sprucing up their new Platts New York apartment seemed like the best first step. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. The Salvation Army thrift store wasn't exactly where the trio had hoped to start, but their wallets and bank accounts didn't give them much choice. So they took their measurements and scoured the furniture section for a sofa that would fit. Their eyes landed on a lumpy faded three-seater. The three of them looked at each other with a mix of disappointment and desperation. It wasn't what they wanted at all, but the measurement fit and it was a real steal at a mere $20. Maybe they could cover it with a nice blanket. With a collective sigh, they decided to buy the frumpy sofa, having no idea what was hidden inside. For the first month, the three of them squirmed around the odd cushioning. They shoved and shifted to find any comfortable position to sit in it. There were probably lumps of stuffing or pieces of upholstery inside. One day, Reese had enough. He gave it a frustrated punch and out came a popping sound. The night of bad movies and cheap popcorn came to an immediate halt. It was time they had to know what kind of messed up guts were inside. They unzipped the cover and found something very odd. There were rolls of bubble wraps, strange stuffing indeed. But when they ripped open one, the three of them gasped. Inside the roll rested a stack of $50 and $100 bills. They pulled out roll after roll until a stack of over $40,000 sat on their table. The three of them screamed with joy, jumping up and down as if they had won the lottery. Callie reached in to find more, but what she pulled out next would shatter their dreams. The three of them had wanted to divide up the money. There was firm and chatter about paying off student loans, going on trips, and maybe getting something for parents. For any debt-ridden adult, it was an absolute miracle. But when Callie pulled out a blank slip with a customer name on it, they wanted to cry. They were now faced with a horrible moral dilemma. After calling the bank and confirming the name, they were certain the money belonged to someone. But was it just lost money or was a stack of cash hidden for more dubious reasons? After all, who would hide money this way? The answer was not only sad but shocking. Reese took the first step and tracked down a phone number. He held the phone with a shaking hand and waited for someone to pick up. The voice on the other end answered with a cranky, yes. His question was simple. Did you sell or give away a sofa recently? The answer left the three of them with a bigger problem. Yes, give it back now. Whoever was on the other end of the phone clearly wasn't a pleasant person. Still, it wasn't right to let the odd string of events to end there. So they got an address and made the long drive to Hudson Valley, having a long conversation about moral compasses and plans in the case things went south. When they pulled in, two women ran out of a tiny rundown home to greet them. It wasn't at all what they had expected. The two of them smiled with joy and gave everyone big hugs. Apparently, it was the owner's daughter and granddaughter. It turned out they would have all the answers. The daughters explained how their mom and dad knew he was going to pass soon, so the mom had hidden away money every month because she knew she would have to have savings when her husband passed away. This is where the story turned, and the daughter started to cry. Her mom had gone into the hospital with heart problems. She had wanted us to give her mother a surprise by fixing up the living room. So without knowing the money was in there, she had gotten rid of the sofa and bought a new one. She was devastated, knowing that she had literally thrown away the only money her mother had left. Another person joined the conversation. It was the grandmother herself. She took one look at the pile of money and the three guests sitting on the new sofa that had caused the entire debacle. The odd woman rushed forward, burst into tears and thanked them over and over. She even gave them a $1,000 from the pile as a thank you. It was at that moment the three of them knew they had made the right decision. 